You ready to go in the water? Let's go! Welcome to the Indiana Dunes National Park. You got this, Salami. We actually have a project called the Dragonfly Mercury Project. Oh, I got a bug. Logan's got one. Oh, this is cool. Major funding for Sci Girls is provided by the National Science Foundation, supporting education and research across all fields of science and engineering. The National Science Foundation, where discoveries begin. Additional funding is provided by the PPG Foundation, which aims to bring color and brightness to communities around the world. Something's still missing. Yeah, I know. It's sunshine. Come on. Is Fang and I entered the Banana Bread Bonanza Contest. Tastiest and most creative wins. I really want to win this. Hmm. You know, fresh air can really spark some new ideas and recipes. Spaghetti. Spaghetti. Let's try spaghetti this time. Mm-hmm. Come on, even the best chefs in the world take breaks. Yep, yep, that's the right amount, mm-hmm. Ugh, this is not good. Ugh. Hmm, uh, Izzy, can you hand me the pickles? Ugh, I think I'm gonna need some help. You know, I bet the Psy Girls will have some ideas. This could work. Straight to the water. We're in the Indiana Dunes National Park. We're kind of like at the very bottom of Lake Michigan. I feel lucky because not everyone can go to the beach as often as we get to. Take our shoes off. It's fun to grow up near Lake Michigan because you get to go on a lot of hikes because there's a lot of trails around. <gasps> oh, there was a lizard right there. We went on the dunes, we went in the water, we went on the trails. Logan, hold out. Indiana Dunes has great hiking trails like the stairs. There's a lot of different types of ecosystems. In one place, it'll be all hot and dry and sandy. And then another place, it'll be like a luscious forest. Oh, watch out for poison ivy. I'm Lucy, I am 12 years old, and I'm going into seventh grade. You ready? My name is Logan, and I live in Gary, Indiana. OK, you ready to go in the water? Let's go! Hi, I'm Saloni, and I live on the Indiana Dunes. Three, two, one! Ah! Me and Saloni and Logan, we met in fourth grade. Me and Saloni, we really kicked it off because we came at the same time, but Lucy was already there. Oh, I think I got a good one. I was told about, like, green, so we help nature, so when there's a lot of science in our school about the dunes. Whee! The dunes in the National Park is like the woods behind our school. And our school pretty much has a backyard trail that goes a really long way. Oh, look! What? That's a bug. And it's fast, dude. Oh, cool. Do you want to ask my mom about it? Yeah. yeah. OK. My mom works for the National Park. She's an entomologist, so she studies bugs. It's kind of hard to get a picture of them. It's camera shy. Leave no trace means you just leave the park how it was or better, and you don't take anything from the park. There you go. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Lucy's mom is a National Park ranger here at the Indiana Dunes. Hey, Mom. Hey, girls. We found a bug in the dunes today. Uh, we were wondering if you can identify it. 
Why don't you take a seat here and uh, see if we can identify this. So we brought the bunch of the heat and we put it out and with a ground beetle. Very cool. That is a type of ground beetle. You know, we've got all kinds of really cool bugs at the Indiana Dunes. She showed us models of bugs and insects. Here's some really pretty moths. Oh, cool. My favorite parts of her collection were the butterflies and moths, because you can see all their wings open. These are my absolute favorites, because these are aquatic insects. Aquatic insects are really, really cool because we can use them to understand how healthy aquatic ecosystems might be. And so you're probably used to seeing dragonflies like this, but I'm used to studying them like this. These are what they look like when they're young. These are their larvae, we call them nymphs. Some of them that live underwater for up to five years before they come out as adults. They live less time above water flying around as actual dragonflies. Dragonflies are predators, so they are eating other little bugs, and sometimes some of the things they might have eaten might be pollutants, things like mercury, things that we don't want to have in our water. So it is an element, and if there's too much of it in the water, it's not good. And so we actually have a project called the Dragonfly Mercury Project that look at the larvae to find out how much mercury we have in the waters of the National Park. Can we help with the project? Absolutely. Yeah, this is citizen science. Citizen science is where anyone can like help out. She said that we were going to be looking they for nymphs. Really you catch them and then we send them to scientists to analyze what's inside them. So you guys can get signed up as a volunteer at the park here and uh, help us to do some really great science. We are going to become citizen scientists and I think it's cool that I get a chance to do this. Hi girls, nice to meet you. My name is Shania. I'm a ranger at Indiana Dunes National Park. Are you excited for today? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Today we're at Great Marsh and we're gonna go look for our nymphs of dragonflies. So there's a few things that you need to know. So protocol is basically just the procedures and stuff that we follow while we do citizen science. If we do things right, by what the opponent hall said to do it, then you get them pimp and data. All of you guys will have waders and life jackets. We had to wear heavy waders so we don't get wet, and uh, we have to wear life hats so when we fall, we float. And you'll off a net, and then when we collect the dragonfly nymphs, we're going to put them individually into a little ice cube tray. All right, net, and net. Thank you. So when you're skimming for dragonflies, you don't want to go very deep at all. You're just going to go like right against the surface of the lake and come up like that. You want to shake it as you come up. And then we're going to look inside of it. If we find any, we're going to put them in these little tiny containers. To protocols, we have to get at least 20 to test them off. You can step in. Oh, okay. oh, this is cool. In the water, Ranger Shania had us going in different spots because she told us that when you're already there, they're more likely everything already went away. You got to look real closely, guys, because they blend in really good. I got another Chanel right now. It was hard, especially looking for it, making sure you don't touch it, but keeping an eye on it, because they just kept really crawling around. Oh, I got a bug. Yeah, it's hiding. It's right there. It was crawling up. Logan's got one. Yay. Yeah. Okay. Now we're going to have Desi come in and collect them for us. We don't want to contaminate this sample. So I'm the clean glove hand. All right, so I'm going to reach in, and I'm going to grab this dragonfly, and I'm going to put it in our ice cube tray so that we can bag it up for later. I got a lot of gunk. That's all right. Sometimes you gotta look really carefully because the dragonflies, they might be hiding in all these plants and stuff. And so you just gotta keep looking. I gotta show. I thought it was very hard because it's like, you really have to put your back into it and dig down in the water and then pull it up with all the seaweed and all the gunk and all that. Oh my gosh, you guys, Lucy got a dragonfly. Yes. yes. Perfect. Yes. It's green. Why do you guys think it's green? Because the water. water. Exactly. All that stuff. So remember, you are what you mm -hmm. eat. You guys have heard that. <laughs> Wait a minute. What's that? Saloni's got a dragonfly. Great. Yay. Oh wait, I think I got one. I felt really excited like that I got one and I got to see one on my own and I thought it was really cool. I think I got one. All right, I'm gonna use my clean glove. I have one, let's have one long enough one. We're gonna be at 20 really soon. 
We are at 19. One more. Who's going to give us our last one? Oh, We're hoping for one. It was a laugh, but I wouldn't find it. Oh, I got one. Yeah! Go Lucy! We need a Lucy moment. Who cares? Okay guys, right now we're gonna take these up there and then we're gonna bag them. When we're done, we're gonna rinse off our waders and our nets because we don't wanna bring anything from this body of water to another one. Seal it and put that in the cooler and take it back to the lab. Uh, it was fun because I'm used to like collecting bugs but I've never done drug plants and I've never been in the marsh. I got stuck too many times. Oh, oh, be careful. I don't, I don't want my hair wet. I have lost it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Palomi. I love Pippa. Mmm, yum. And I like Pippa. And I love to sleep. I love to play basketball. I also like volleyball. Bye. This afternoon, we are going to examine and measure the nymphs. 20 millimeters. Each one of us puts in looking at them, measuring them, and then labeling them. And then we're gonna ship them up to the lab so they can find out how much mercury is in the water. What's better is less mercury because it's not good for our water. We'll take out one of these little tags and we use these to identify the type of dragonfly. We need to know the family of the dragonfly so that we can see if uh, certain families collect more mercury than others. Slimy. Very slimy look. I think the dragonfly really nymph is slightly weird. I saw the exoskeleton. No, nymphs were generally green most of the time, like a leafy green. Now that you guys are done identifying them, we'll put the insect and the tag that we made for it inside of another bag and send it off to the laboratory. It was fun because you get to be a scientist for a day. Well, now that you guys are done with this, the next thing to do is that you guys explore and do some more research and then share what you found. So after we collected the nymphs, we go exploring. Princess Shania, one of her job is to leave people kayaking. That sounds pretty fun. I wish I could do that. You got this, Salami. You're doing great. While we were kayaking, we talked about how you can be a good steward of the environment and ecosystem. Really? You can't drive. You're going to be a horrible driver. <laughs> Princess Shania told us about the Indiana dunes and how they were formed. So these dunes were formed after the continental glaciers that covered all of this area melted away. And when they melted, they created the Great Lakes. Ranger Shania told us that all the water flows into Lake Michigan and all the land around it is part of the Lake Michigan watershed. So we live in the Lake Michigan watershed. When the Great Lakes formed and the water would rise and fall, it would create different environments and ecosystems. So Indiana Dunes National Park, it's one of the most biodiverse. Because there's so many ecosystems here, this is the birthplace of ecology. We've got bogs, we've got marsh and wetlands. Right over there is dune and swale. Right next to us is Black Oak Savanna. We were learning about the park while we were kayaking, because usually you would just like go out, look at fish. But we got to learn about the land also, not only the water, but also water quality. I thought that the kayaking was really fun and interesting. Oh, so, so we were kayaking on the way back. Logan put her paddle and splash Lucy. Oh, <laughs> I got splash of water and then I splash Lucy with water. Oh, gosh, it was hilarious. 
Uh, I got splashed a lot with her paddle. Oh. Logan! But uh, it was fun. This afternoon, we went on a hike and found native species and invasive species. Careful for the nettle. Today, we're hiking on Little Calumet East River. Since we're by the Little Calumet, we've got a lot of cool species near here. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. So the Little Calumet River, all the water flows into Lake Michigan and is part of the Lake Michigan watershed. You know how I mentioned earlier that we're a really biodiverse park? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when we have more invasive species, we lose biodiversity because there's more of them than there are our native species. The park's job is to try our best to get rid of that and, and replant native species so that we can increase our biodiversity. Invasive species are, they basically are just plants and animals that like don't belong. The non-native species can be more like a bully how they kill other plants. Have you guys gotten rid of any invasive species on your own? Uh, yeah. yeah. What type? Non-native uh, bittersweet and English ivy. At my school, all three of us have like, removed the invasive species. Okay guys, mm -hmm. so let's get going. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lucy and I like to knit and crochet, so here are two blankets that I have knitted. I also love to grow plants, it's like my favorite hobby. These are a couple of propagations that I have. Hey, this is another one of my favorite plants. It's called the UFO plant or like the pepperoni plant sometimes. Uh, it's also known as the friendship plant because it grows baby plants and you can like cut them out and give them to your friends. I also love to write poetry. So this is my poetry notebook. This is my cat, Cosmos. He's eating. So these are my dogs. There's Seamus, he's the old one. And then there's Pole Bear. They love their ball. Good boy, good boy. Uh, this is my goat. Uh, his name is Nibbles. Hi, hi. So this is the garden that I help plant. They're all vegetables. Uh, and then these are snap peas, which are in season. So, <laughs> bye. <laughs> So we're at the Shedd Aquarium today, which is a museum near the lake. Hey, look it, Great Lakes. We went to Shedd Aquarium early in the morning. Too early, way too early. That's really the, slimy. The water's really it's cold scary. though. It's but, cold. Like, My hands are cold. They're huge. We want to like find out more about watershed. Great Lakes are like the largest system of fresh water on Earth. Water quality was a big one that we learned from the shed and how we need clean water for a safe and healthy environment. So that tied in with the um, Great Marsh collecting. I didn't know that goldfish were invasive. In the gallery about the Great Lakes, we learned about invasive species. Already more than 180 invasive animals and plant species have made themselves at home in the Great Lakes. Whoa. Oh, these are the lampreys. Oh, they look like leeches. Oh, oh we've seen this. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen the zebra mussels in uh, the little calumet even. There are gardens outside of the shed, and uh, they're all kind of restored habitat, so there's a lot of native species. Cool, they plant all this milkweed. This probably used to be all grass. Yeah. The shed garden, what it is trying to do is fix the invasive species damage by replanting and regrowing everything. I think this is sedge. We have a lot of this by the beach. Mm -hmm. Next, we are going to my house to work on a project to share what we learned. Oh, hi, my name is Logan. My favorite hobby is to ride my new scooter. Another one of my favorite things is to cook. But right now, I'm cooking me a cheesy omelet. One of my favorite things to do and favorite sports is soccer. One of my other favorite things to do is play piano. Now one of my favorite things to do is draw. Now this is a top 10. So this is my favorite boy. His name is Pharaoh, and he's the best boy you could ask for. So.
We are at my house to work on a project to share what we learned. What about bingo? Okay. On puzzles. That would be fun. Bingo? Mm-mm. Puzzles? Mm-mm. Ooh, what about a scavenger hunt? Scavenger? Mm-hmm. We chose a scavenger hunt rather than a poster or like a presentation so that people can interactively learn. We're going to have them look around and find different plants and things around the Douglas Center. So we'll meet up tomorrow and get this thing done. Sounds good. Okay. What's this? Ooh, a new recipe? Yep, it's a recipe for adventure in your very own backyard ecosystem. I made you a scavenger hunt. Whoa, thanks, Iz. <clears throat> Floating in the sky, I'm never dry. Ooh, the clouds. Yeah, that's it. So, what do you see? <gasps> Banana bread. Well, I see a dragonfly. Banana cream pie, banana muffins, yum! Banana pancakes? No, oh, Jake. <laughs> okay, let's try the next one. Find a furry friend that you don't already know. I found a bunny! Uh, are you eating grass? Yeah? You're so furry. Look at you hop away. Oh, he is so cute. <sighs> okay, Jake, last one. I've got a trunk, but I am not an elephant. <gasps> My tree! Yes, you got it. <gasps> hey, look, Fang found a pecan. Fang, that's it. That's the missing ingredient for our banana bread. We decided to come to the Douglas Center to see which things we could have the guests find. We can do ferns. Ferns, there's a lot of them here. Yeah. We're looking for uh, native and invasive species and stuff unique to our park. We can probably do these little flowers. These would make a really good riddle. I don't know what kind they are, though. Here, let's check it out. If we're not sure what something is, we're going to use this app, and it's going to identify it. These are woodland sunflowers. They're pretty easy to spot, but there's only a few of them. What's that purple flower? Kind of looks like the bee balm. Let's check it out. Yep, you're right. Stop invasive hitchhikers. Use this food brush before and after your hike to remove dirt and invasive seeds. Hey, we don't let me part of the scavenger hunt. We can get the sassafras. Oh, yeah. right. The three different types of leaves. Yep. The mitten, football, and ghost. And we can even tell them, look for mitten, football, and ghost. Oh, we also have to get the purple looster. I'm excited because we get to see our friends, and I'm curious how, like, if they'll find all the stuff. Welcome to the Indiana Dunes National Park. Thanks for coming. That was fun to hunt. When everybody got here, we told them about the scavenger hunt and our citizen science project. Uh, so we've been working on citizen science and learning at the park all week, and we've made a scavenger hunt to share what we've learned. We've been working on the Dragonfly Mercury Project, which measures mercury levels in the water. We went in Great Marsh. We collect dragonfly nymphs, and we measure mercury in our water. Nymphs are small baby dragonflies. We want our guests to learn like the things that we've learned to make them aware and to show them how they can take care of the land. This is your scavenger hunt. It's the Indoon scavenger hunt. Yes. Rules for the scavenger hunt. Work in teams. Find five things on the list. If you see like a dragonfly or a butterfly, take pictures of it, because you will get like a bonus on here. Then we broke into groups and went looking. Ready, set, go! Okay. I think it went really good. People did like the scavenger hunt. We have to go find the flower spurge. The flower spurge! Yeah, Aaron was like a bit competitive. Is this bee balm? Is this bee balm? And surprisingly, the adults, they wanted to do it because I didn't think they would want to do it. Just keep looking, Paul, and point it out if you see it. No. See? They're white. They're white. Hey, bee balm! I guess my dad thought it was cool because him 
and then Lucy's dad, they were both running along the trail looking for stuff. Lucy's dad, come on! The scavenger hunt was fun. I found Bee Balm. I think the scavenger hunt was awesome. Me too, yeah. I like searching for stuff, and I also like winning. Freaking freaking back and burn. Oak tree. Poison ivy. Boot brush. Oak sapling. Bee balm. You guys did it. Good job. <laughs> well, today was fun. Um, the sandwich I have was a little short. Uh, right there. Right there. Oh, this is a blast. Of course, we might have broken the no running rule a little bit. You know, just to be out here with her. I mean, it's just a joy to see her out enjoying nature and learning all these new things. We had a great time out here. Thank you for coming. I felt good about this, and it's good to teach others new things. I think I'll advance the family learn more about invasive species and native species. I hope that they find invasive species that they might have at their house that they might want to help treat to remove and like citizen science. It's good to uh, be a part of citizen science because you're not only helping scientists, you're helping yourself and your environment around you. I had so much fun in your scavenger hunt today. You should be really proud of yourselves. You did really good. Come visit our park anytime. Have a great day, guys. You too. Bye. 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 Presenting Peekaboo Bee Camp Banana Bonanza Bunny Bread. Oh, yes. Or maybe for short, Backyard Bunny Bread. Yeah, that's got a nice ring to it. Going outside today really helped me invent the tastiest creation. Thanks, Iz. And you should also thank your backyard ecosystem. <laughs> Welcome to Seward! We're surrounded by water and mountains. Uh, Y'all want to head out there? Yeah, sure. let's go. I'm really excited to do some citizen science. We saw lots of different shells and plants. Whoa! <laughs> Welcome to the Mississippi River. What are some things that end up polluting our watershed? Here's another can. We are making an art project, so it inspires other people to help the environment. It's team effort. River Rescuers! Major funding for Sci Girls is provided by the National Science Foundation, supporting education and research across all fields of science and engineering. The National Science Foundation, where discoveries begin. Additional funding is provided by the PPG Foundation, which aims to bring color and brightness to communities around the world. There's more fun on the Sci Girls website. You can watch videos, play games, and look for creatures in the great outdoors. See you soon at pbskids.org.